Yo, what's up? My name is Manuel, and I'm really, really glad you're here. If you're new, this channel is all about aviation, and if you're an aviation enthusiast, or if you're looking for, to be a pilot, I highly encourage you to subscribe. But anyways, today we're gonna focus on a very interesting topic, uh, a topic that most people forget about when they land their the aircraft but when you look at it from the outside they're always questioned that is how does how what happens to the aircraft landing gear at touchdown how to, can it cope all the forces from the aircraft and the ground and the speed from touchdown as well as the rising temperatures from the brakes well we're gonna answer that through this video as well as why are they tilted? Stay tuned to the end. So let's start off with the different types of landing gears, okay? Because these landing gears, they don't always have to land at, you know, at a runway. They sometimes land at the ocean. I mean, yeah, at the ocean or at a lake, uh, even at a river, or sometimes even at the grass. And and the uh, and the landing gear has to be especially designed for that. For example, <clears throat> the the aircraft that that can land on the water, they have floats. These floats are big buoys that they are fitted um under the the belly from the aircraft. They are fitted under that so they can land on water, and some of them have landing gears so they can also as well as uh, it can also land on runways, and. The landing gear that are that are fitted to land on grass, they are much thicker. They are much thicker than usual, and you'll see them mostly at at general aviation aircraft, which you know, it is fascinating. But we're mostly gonna talk about airliners, and these in these airliners, they are they are quite interesting because because they 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 are the biggest aircraft. And they are able, and the landing gear has a are is able to cope with all the stress from the weight of the aircraft plus the temperatures and etc. And so, we're gonna focus on that. And what you have to know is that each of these landing gear systems, they are they have struts. You know what what a strut does is that it it absorbs the impact or at least or at least some of the impact from the from from the landing in other words they could be made from a variety of, of types in in general aviation and the small cessnas and all that stuff they are you know they are more they are made of steel and they are they don't absorb that much from the impact because especially since they're small aircraft but in an airliner they have a pretty fancy name which i'll put it here and I don't have to repeat it, but for simplicity, we're just going to call it airliner struts. These airliner struts, they are made of nitrogen. And, but we might wonder, why are they made of nitrogen? Can't it just be made of pressurized air, like a normal car, or a normal car tire? Well, the issue with pressurized air is that it has oxygen. And oxygen is a reactive, is a reactive element. And nitrogen is doesn't react at all with 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 exaggerated in temperature changes or pressure changes. It doesn't react that much. It's called inert. And since nitrogen is is it all, it's also what's made inside of the tire from the from each landing gear. It, it is also the struts since the struts are the the things that are above the tires. That's part of the landing gear. It's what absorbs the impact. It's also made of nitrogen plus some oil uh, to to make it as smooth as possible and not cause any, you know, any any sort of mechanical failures or anything. So you might notice that, that first of all, the, those landing gears, they're made of, they have very different systems, especially in between Boeing and Airbus, but you know, you might ask some a question that it's also really common. Why are they tilted? Like, why do they have to be tilted in order to, you know, in in order to before they land? Well, it's actually pretty simple. 
The only reason why are they tilted is not because they they are to make as the landing as butter as possible. If you actually thought that it's not real, is you know it looks good, but it's not because to to make the landing as good as possible. It is actually to to have more space because you can notice how you know, you can notice how uh, the landing gear retracts on. For example, the Boeing seven forty seven has many many tires or landing gears. It has many many landing gears, and you can see it how it retracts into a single space. And the reason why it does that is because there are fuel tanks. There are fuel tanks at the belly of the aircraft, and they need to be as you know as big as possible there's also <clears throat> yeah they need to be as big as possible and and the landing gear chamber or the landing gear housing it cannot be as big and that is why when you tilt them and you put them all together it saves a lot of space and that is why we do uh, that's why each airliner has done that and that is why it has worked for every single big new aircraft so now we have learned that why are they tilted and how do they work in some in simplicity and oversimplified terms but a really really common question i've actually encountered is why don't they spin before landing like what why don't they just because you always see it in each landing how these uh, you know, dust plumes or the water plumes in the air just as soon as the aircraft touched down, so it touches down and like it must absorb a lot of energy and in and it's it's also a little it seems a little inefficient because it's wasting the wear and tear from the from the aircraft landing gear well you have to there's a lot more into it because you have to also look at the development costs like how much would it cost to just add a simple a simple rotating motor whether electric or gas type in order to spin the aircraft i mean the aircraft the in order to spin the landing gear just for a touchdown and you might think oh but that that could save a lot of of that, that could save a lot of wear and tear so why didn't they just do that why didn't they just uh you know Why don't you just, why don't they just focus on the costs i mean the benefits instead of, instead of the costs well it's it actually causes more it actually causes more uh, costs instead of benefits because if you have a rotating motor in an aircraft i mean yes in a landing gear if i rotate a motor in an aircraft then you have to worry about what happens if it fails. What happens if if all of the aircraft motors, yes, you know, so the aircraft landing gear motors, start uh, actually work except just one? That would be an issue because when you touch down, there would be a, a really huge difference of energy impact, and you might even damage it. So there are many many risks. There's also the there's also the risk of of a fire because because in, for the for the for the motor to work it needs a battery and batteries in an aircraft you have if you if you've been aware of the security inside the lithium batteries involved in aviation security then this you you already know that this is really really risky. And as but even if it's not made of lithium or if there is if there is a type of battery that's not made of lithium, I don't know anything about batteries, but <laughs> but anyways, if even if there is none in made of lithium, well, there's also you know it it could also be flammable in any case because the and there could be an electric, an an. And actually, yeah, because one of the electric currents might damage itself and that could cause a fire or damage the landing gear itself. So you need to be aware of the risk scenarios that uh, that happens with every single 
with every single time they implement a new technology in an aircraft. And there's also the crosswind landing because what most people want is that they they want to the 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 aircraft landing gear to be spinning before landing, but if you have a crosswind landing, that's part of the sense the aircraft nose is pointing to another direction in order to align the aircraft. Well, then there will be an issue, especially if it's a, a strong crosswind, because there there will still be a difference uh, between the direction of the nose of the aircraft and the direction it's going, and that would actually damage the uh, that might actually damage the aircraft and and it could be and it's still impractical. It doesn't necessarily mean that the tires will one day explode that like it has happened, but in a car it's a lot more common, so <laughs> so it's not really that common in aviation, but it still happens anyways. But you know, but you st you can still say that the wear and tear actually is still is being affected. Well, yeah, but actually, uh, the changing the tire from an aircraft is really really inexpensive. It's fifteen hundred dollars, but you might say it's expensive, but it's actually not, <laughs> it's because the because especially compared to the changing of an engine to the aircraft, that is really really inexpensive as well as <laughs> don't even forget about the fuel costs. The, the fuel costs in, in each flight they are really really different between uh, the. Uh, the t the changing from a tire so so yeah it's really inefficient and to to have a motor in the landing gear and it's, uh, it's it's not worth it so you've probably seen these cool videos about the aircraft taking off and retracting its gear well how does it actually do that well there are actually two ways the aircraft does that there are not all aircraft do that but most modern airliners and even some general aviation aircraft actually do that. They do that with electricity and with hydraulics. With electricity, it's pretty simple, but it's mostly used with general aviation aircraft and it's not really that efficient, especially with airliners. Airliners use hydraulics. They use hydraulics because it's what causes the most pressure to for the aircraft to retract its gear, and that is how it, it goes up and it causes it doesn't cause any drag because the only reason it retracts is because the landing gear causes an insane amount of drag it is extra it is extended uh, before touchdown yes because to increase drag but immediately after takeoff it is retracted because it is no longer needed and it causes a lot of drag so so that is why it's being re uh, retracted but what if the hydraulic or the hydraulic system fails like what if you send you send a signal to retract the landing gear and and the air, and the aircraft doesn't re, uh, extend its landing gear to some malfunction or something well there's the good help of the manual gear extension there are some general aviation aircraft that can actually do that with just manually but it's way less common and and with an airliner you can't even retract it manually you just have to drop it and it uses gravity so, and and plus the doors are, are still being open uh, after the gravity gear extension uh, thing is <laughs> the, the thing is being pulled it's a it's a red hook and and each airliner has one and and it's only used to do that in case if that happens and in the consideration between if you're going to go around or you're going to an alternate airport has to be more carefully considered because because you're consider because drag is a huge factor with landing gear and you're going and you can't even retract it if you have the manual gear extension so and so yeah, and so you have to cope with that drag and burn more more fuel, and yeah. What but what if it what if what if it doesn't work after takeoff? Well, it, well, what mostly happens is that the aircraft, um, the the aircraft returns to the airport, and 
cancels or even delay delays a flight if they're ha if they're fast enough, they cancel the flight and the and they order um they order a maintenance for the hydraulics and boom they're done, and it's how it's simple that's how simple, but but yeah don't worry about it it's something really weird. To end this video, let's talk about brakes. You know, because brakes is part of it's a very essential part from the air from the landing gear and it's also very risky because you saw you've also seen these videos that uh, that the aircraft lands and after it lands there's a lot of smoke coming from the from the air from the landing gear and you might even see fire from burning in the in the landing gear. Well that is caused by the brakes. The brakes in airliners uh, in, in airliners especially they are made of two uh, of two materials the carbon and steel and the steel one the steel ones are, tend to be more efficient but it's, it's another topic and but the, th the thing you have to understand is that the, the forces from the brakes because they are massive even if you're just taxing and uh, they are massive and and they and they can burn up to like thousands of degrees Celsius. I mean, at least a thousand. That is like the most, uh, the minimum temperature before something catastrophic happens to the landing gear. But, uh, but it mostly happens on brake tests. So don't worry about it. And, but the question is, how don't they destroy the landing gear at after landing, uh, or during landing? Because there's, because there are there are runways that are really really short. And the brakes have to be really, really hard in order to stop the aircraft. Well, well, it's simple. As we talked about before, it's because of the nitrogen that the landing gear is made, as well as the temperature changes because the because the temperature breaks and it ch and it changes as the aircraft climbs because the, where the aircraft cruises. It's actually minus sixty degrees Celsius, minus fifty five, somewhere around that, and the brakes cool that at that point, and you're completely good to go for to use those brakes because, because you already cooled them down, and that is why after land, uh, before landing, they are, at a, at a lower than normal temperature, they are still adapted to the sea level temperature, but. They are, but they are more safe. They are safe to use, and the this, and in addition, the nitrogen from the landing gear, just with the struts and the the tires, uh, they add more safety towards these brakes and pre to prevent any sort of fire or any sort of malfunction. So that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I will be publishing every day. So tomorrow's a new topic, and. I, and I hope you really like this video and subscribe if you actually want to to watch every single one of these videos uh, especially for tomorrow and this for and for that we'll see you on the next video happy flying